Begin the current daf mesechts ba bekamad of tzadiches. We begin four lines down at the top of the yamad, where the gemara continues in the related discussion from the previous daf, which we were talking about regarding the laws of um, stealing and the hezek as it regards matbeis, regarding coins. Which then the gemara gets us into a whole conversation regarding the halacha of grama, uh, regarding if someone is liable for an indirect cause of damage. Shes goes ban bekazik and chesk to enter daf chaim. Throughout the entire world. So we're discussing today's Dafa, the four cases of Grama bin Nizak and Pater. Uh, one of them starts off with what we were discussing regarding um, stealing and damaging uh, coins from someone else, which we were speaking about in Matbeis, which is if someone throws someone's coin into the Amagadl, that is Pater, as we'll see, it's really only an indirect cause. Hashaf Matbeis al Khabir Pater, someone goes and uh, basically smashes down the coin of his friend, he's going to be potter. At the same time, if someone uh, makes a hole in his uh, friend's cow, he's potter. And if someone just burns the document uh, of, of another person, he's going to be potter. And Rav Dimi Barchanin says, he would be chayv through Rav Shemitz Kansabab, Dov HaGom and Lamam Kavam Dami, that to make causes of monetary liability uh, would, would be liable for that. Uh, now, Rav Hunber Yeshua says, he would be potter even according to Rav Shemitz. Because Rav Shimon only holds something that its uh, origin is primarily money. As we describe, something that, that was never really a substance of money, you're not going to be chayv. Other concepts in today's daf are gazel chametz rabba lava pesach. When you steal chametz, and we said in the Mishnah, if it pesach passed, I'm a lerishal chabanecha. He could say, here, this is your chametz, uh, take it. But the Gemara has a discussion whether this depends on the Machlegis regarding If someone was a shamer for an ox, and the ox gored, and it killed, and now it's Chayv Misa, and after the Gemara didn't, after the verdict, he now gives it back to the owner and says, hey, this is your ox, if you could do that or not, and if that would be dependent on this halach of Gozal Chametz, Bala Pesach, to also say, Harishal Chalaf Necha. To begin the Karad Daf, the Tzadik Ches, four lines down at the top of the Yamid, where the Gemara uh, brings... Uh, this concept of Grama bin Isaac and Patra and brings four different halachas. Amar Rabba. Hazeiching Madbeya Shechavet al Yamagadu. Someone throws a coin of his friend into the great sea. Now, even though the guy can't take it, it's on the bottom of the ocean. Patr, the guy who threw it there is going to be exempt, as Digmar is going to explain. My time, what's the reason? Because Amar, he could say, Hamadach Kamach. Here, it's laying there in front of you. If you want, you can take it. Now, the Gemara qualifies that. This talk talking about where you're there in uh, some, uh, some Mecca or something, and the, the water is bluer than, uh, than, than blue. And you see straight down to the bottom all the beautiful fish and the Kachazile, where you see it. But if the water is murky at the time when you threw it into the ocean, where you cannot see it, then then... It's an active action of destruction, and that's not a goyim, it's not just a causation. That is literally, because you literally threw it into the uh, ocean, and therefore you're going to be liable. Now, Tysus explains, in the Masla Kurim it's Lula, and he says, it's not really necessarily dependent on if it's murky or clear water. It's just that, even if it's murky, that even if you can get a uh, a diver down to take it, um, then it would be considered like clear. And even if it's clear, if you can't get it, then you would be chayiv. The reason why I'm picking clear water and murky water is because generally when it's clear, you could send a, a, a deep diver down to get it. And when it's murky, you can't. But really, it's dependent on really if you can get it or not. And it, 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 if you can get it, so then as we'll, as we'll continue to discuss, it's only a grama because you can get it. And if, if it's not, then, then, then it's an act of destruction because there's no way to ac- access it anymore. And therefore, you, when you threw it down, you were actively destroyed it. Now, the Gemara has one more qualification for this. The Gemara says, Bahani Mili, when did we say this? Is the Adya Aduye. It's talking about where it was in the hand of the owner, and this guy hid him beneath his hand, and it shot it into the ocean. Since the water is clear and you could see it, you could tell him, look, it's there in front of you, it's not lost. And if it's because he has to pay now $500 to the deep sea divers to get on their gear and go down and to get it for him, oh, that's a grama that is causing him a loss of how much the wages are going to be. Grama bin Izak and his potter, an indirect causation by damage, is going to be potter. But therefore, 
um, you're going to be potter. Now, this is specifically if you knocked his hand and now his 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 gadget went down to the bottom of the ocean. Of a shakla but if let's say the guy took it in his hand and then he threw it into the ocean, oh Migzal Gosley, then he stole it. Hashaba by Mabid, you have to do Hashaba, you have to return it. <laughs> Even though it's right there, you have to return it, and therefore he is going to be liable in that case. This has a whole discussion regarding um picking up and throwing, and if you're going to be kind of, if you're knocking it out. But Akapan the Gemara is saying that when you knock it out of his hands and you didn't actively take it and it's there, okay, so that's a grama because the guy could get it. Ah, he's going to have to pay for, for deep sea divers. That's, 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 that's a grama. But if he takes it, he's going to be chayib. Or if it's murky water where he did an act of destruction, either one of those is going to be chayib. Now, Masab Rabba. Rabba asks on Rabba from the following price. The Brisa says, Ein You cannot redeem the Meiser Sheni al Mois Sheinun Birshusai on monies that is not in his possession. Kate said, How so? What do you mean? Meaning, generally, what happens is you have Meiser Sheni produce. You don't want to take it all up to your shlime. You, you redeem it. You deconsecrate it onto funds. But the funds have to be in your possession. Kate said, Oyle Mois Bekastara. Let's say he had money in a place called Kastara, which is very far away and very dangerous roads to get there. And there's, there's not so common caravans to get there. Or on the high point of Haramelech, let's say his purse fell into the Great Sea. He has the money, but it's in the, you need divers to get it. So in Mechalan, you cannot use it to redeem the Meister Shani Purus. Ah, so you see that it is considered lost in the Yamagadol. If it's on the bottom of the Mediterranean, if it's on the bottom of the ocean, so we say that it's not considered available, it's lost. So if it's lost, so why you not chayiv, even though if it's clear, when you knock the guy's money into the ocean? So Rabbi says, no, shani le the Allah of is different. It has to be accessible. It's not destroyed on the bottom of the ocean. It is still there, but it's not accessible. The Rahman the Torah says in the bottom, when it talks about redeeming the Maisa Shani, but it says, you're going you're gonna to bind the money in your hand. It has and you don't, know, that's why it's going to be excluded, but not because it's considered as not here in the world. Another teaching from Grama bin Nezakin from Ba'ama Rabba, again from Rabba, he says the following halach ashaf, if someone ruins the impression of Matbeya Shachaveira, of someone's coin, he, he, he ruins the, 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 the figure of the coin, which is what the coin is. The coin is a minted coin. You take a piece of metal and then you put a figure on it. He rubs out that figure. Potter is going to be exempt. My time, what's the reason? He didn't do anything. Meaning, even though, obviously, the coin is not going to be the same value anymore, but he didn't do anything. Now, when we say this, it's specifically if he took a hammer, he pounded it, and he flattened it like a flat stone. That's where we say that, okay, the, the coin is still there. It not, he didn't take away anything. It's just maybe a grama. But if he filed it down with a file from the, from the smiths, oh, now he's already, like someone said yesterday, people used to take off the gold from the coins. He, rub, he ready, Now he made him lose a little bit. That's substantial. That's not just a grama. Which again, Rashi explains all these alochas of Rabbah are all from the principle of grama bin Nizakin, of indirect cause and never going to be potter. So if you actually filed off something, so then since the silver content of the coin was diminished, the actual damage are going to be high. But if you just pounded it, now it doesn't have the figure anymore. Okay, so I'm saying you're causing the damage, but you didn't actually do anything, and therefore you're going to be potter. But Musab Rav, Rav asked from the following Bryce. The Bryce says, Someone hit his slave on the eye and he blinded him. Or or on his ear and he made him deaf. So the Allah has Ebed Yates ben Lacheris. His slave is going to go free. Which place discusses why, but he's not diminishing any part of him. But is the Allah that, no, we said previously that um, about, um, uh, he has a drop of blood. But back upon him, we see that even though. Um, he did not cause him any diminishment, meaning not, nothing, nothing, nothing changed. The Ebed is still the same. But since he did something to the body of the Ebed, it's not considered as a grama. It's considered as mamish, like you did some type of injury. See, Rosso, since you went and you pounded the coin with a, with a hammer and you diminished it, 
And because of that, it's, it's worth less now. So that's considered as a misa. So therefore, Rav is asking, he says, why is making a slave go deaf or blind, where he looks to say, everything's the same, you didn't take, but you took away a, a certain uh, merit of it, different than the coin of pounding it down. Now, in contrast, just to finish off that price, the Kenegede in the Bein Raya, we knocked him opposite his eye, now he can't see, or Kenegede is the opposite of the Bein Nishmik, not here. Look at the Ein Yabed Yitzvah, and the Chiris, because that's, that's not touching him, but when you do the Maisa in the Ebed, even though he's not missing anything, you see that you're going to be high, but why are you potted by the coin? What? Well, Um, do you want to say that, but I'm saying, but you didn't do anything. Meaning, if you knock off one of his 24 organs, so that we learn now from Shem Ba'ayin that he goes free. But the Gemara is asking, he's saying, but you didn't do anything. You, not, you didn't diminish anything from, from the Abbot. He's, he's the same as he was. Now, he can't hear, but why is that different? It's a grum. I mean, why is it any different than the case of, let's say, pounding the coin and flattening it? That's, that's what the Gemara is asking. Yeah, Xerxes Kassav says that if he if he knocks if he takes the eye and gouges the eye and he rips off his ear, yeah, then he's going to go pata. He's going to go. He's going to go out. But but here I didn't do anything based on what you're saying. You didn't do. So the Gemara says no, it's not true. Rabbi Tamei, Rabbi goes according to his reasoning. As we mentioned this on the previous daf and daf pevav, Rabbi Rabbi says Charshula of Nereg. If someone makes his father go deaf, he gets killed. Why? Sheev shalachadish blechabura. That you can't make a person deaf without some type of an internal wound. The tips of the dumb enough lebuuna is a drop of blood that drips in his ear, so therefore, by the evidence, there is a case of chesaron. Exactly, there's something missing. There was something that was diminished, that was drawn blood, and therefore that's why you are chayim, and therefore he goes free. Whereas when it was connected azna, and you did it right opposite his ear, you didn't touch his ear, you put it because um, that he shouldn't have been affected by that. And that's for sure if he is, there's only a grama, and therefore he's going to be put. Another teaching, teaching number three, from the Amar Rabbah, he says, Atzayrim, if someone goes and uh, cuts, Oizen uh, the ear of someone's cow. Pati is exempt. My time, what's the reason? Because Pati is the cow, the cow is as it is. The other lady, he didn't do anything. The cow is not affected. I, what do you mean? You can't bring such an animal as a carbon. The coolest from love like a mezbeh kami. All oxen are not designated for the Mizbeach. So Tais actually says that on the Maschal Tzayim, he says previously there was a diuk that it would be a problem. That's if, let's say, an animal was already sanctified. It's for sure going to the Mizbeach, then maybe it would be a problem if you made a, a mum. But here, a regular animal that just by cutting its, uh, 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 its ear, it's, it's, it doesn't affect anything, and therefore uh, that would be uh, not chayiv for any liability. But Master Rava, Rava asks again now from, from, on this teaching from the following Braisa. If someone does work with the Mechatas, Mechatas is the water that was specially made for the Paraduma, where let's say he used it as a counterweight. So he's doing work with the water. Or the Parashatas, or let's say with the Paraduma itself where the para and all its activities, they become invalidated if you do any malacha with them. So Allah is patam dini adam, you're exempt from dini adam, because nothing looks like anything was done. But b'chai b'din ishmaim, you're liable for the hands of heaven, because you ruined the whole thing now. This paraduma and its waters is invalid, is disqualified. Says the Gemara, but one thing we see is malachu dule minkre azeka. That's only because you did some type of work where you don't recognize any of the damage, but because you used it as a counterweight, you see any difference? Nothing is recognizable. So therefore, that's where you say you can be potter. About Tzayrim, but making a hole in the air, the Minkar HaZeka, which recognizable the damage, you, you see some remnant. The inference would seem to be that then you would be liable even for uh, for, 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 for Dini Adam, that you would be Chayiv. So that seems to contradict Rabbi's teaching. I mean, they said, no, it's not true. Then the same thing would be the Philip Tzayrim potter. Even if you like made a hole in the air, if you cut the air, you'd be you would be potter. So why are we saying a lesser case here in this b'risa? What we're coming to tell you is that yeah, of course if you cut the paraduma's ear, you'd be chayv. But we're saying that even if you just did something, um, if, if you did something that, that's not recognizable at all, chayv the other way. You're asking, oh, you see, 
that you're the chayv the adam, and that no, you're the part the adam. But the chiddush is on this case that you're chayv the that you're chayv the shemayim, even though you did something that's totally unrecognizable, that uh, that's still going to be chayv on that. Uh, halacha number four, v'amar rabba, on the same theme again from rabba, haserif shtoga shel chaveira. If someone burns the document of his friend, which shows about a debt that's owed to him, so the guy who burnt it, his part is exempt. Why? Damali tells him, Neira keloi minach. What I do? I just burnt a piece of paper, and that has no value. And then from Nachayev, which again, because although the guy lost now a, 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 a six million dollar you know document that you know a debt is owed him, but that's a grama, and and therefore he's Nachayev. Well, it's also not a fire reality because you could make them swear. Make who swear? Whoever owes the money. Oh, so the Gemara has a similar type of a question. Masik Blarum Bacham. It says, Hey Chadam. It says, Wait a second. What's the case? Tomas Rik Tin Tamid Base. He says, E de Ika Sahadi. Um, the Yadi, my Havid Bishnagha, if there are witnesses who know what was in the document, so look to Relation of Alia. Let them write for him a bona fide document, which Tracy points out a question. You know, there's Allah, Mar tells us, get in the final of Nipihem, which is, has to be from what they saw, but let me pick some, not from the writings. So, how does this work? That you can, they can, they can, they they know what was written. That's not what they saw. They, that's my peak savam. So that says no, that's not true because since they saw a document of witnesses that were signed that were verified in a court of law, it's it's like as if they saw the same, the thing itself, and that wouldn't be considered the pm or me peak savam. So it's enough that if if witnesses saw this document that with this guy burned, they'll just write him a new one. And be like as adam, there's no witnesses on nomina yadina. He says we. How do we even know what was written in there <laughs> that, that he should be able to collect? So like Rashi explained the Gemara's question, you don't have to say he's going to be part of it. Of course he's going to be part of it because no one, even know, no one even, would even know what was even there to be Mechaev, the guy who burnt it. If you have witnesses who said, we know how much was there, and now you caused him the loss, so now let them write him a new document. If there's no witnesses to say, then what was the Havamina to be Mechaev, the guy who burnt it? No one knows how much was there. So says the Gemara, no, I'm a rabbi. It says, hey, you could explain it where the owner of the document trusts the guy who burnt it, whatever it is that is written on it, that that's what, it, what was there. So he believes him. And even so, he's going to be part of because he's still a grum. So another, he trusts him. He says, yeah, it was written $100,000 and I burnt it. And, you know, and, and, and even so, again, he'd be part of because of grum, but they can't write a new document because there's no witnesses to that effect. So we had four different teachings from Rabbah that illustrate this point of grama, benizak, and potter, an indirect cause, but damage is going to be exempt. Now, I'm Rabdi Machanin. It says, Hadar Rabbah, this teaching of Rabbah. Machlik is Rabshim Rabbani. Machlik is Tanoim, Rabshim and Rabban. We're so. Little Rabshim and Imperik Merubah that we have in the Vine Dalman Vase, we're going to call him that you have a carbon regarding if you have a carbon that you had designated and you said, Hare Allah, you're taking responsibility. That the Amar, he says, Dava Gabbana, Mama Kamama, Dami. That what happens if someone, let's say, steals your carbon? So you say, well, well I don't have that chayv to you. I stole from Hector. He says, no, no, no. If I take my carbon, I got to bring a new carbon. So there'll be your chayv for me, for K, for whatever. So mechayv. When you burn the document, in all these cases, you can be chayv because it, it's a causation for monetary loss. And then you can be chayv. But according to the hold that a causation for monetary loss is not considered like money itself. Let me chayv. You're not going to be chayv. Seemingly, this is a machlik is tanoim. However, the Gemara says not so simple. Mask below the pun the of Yeshua. He says, "Wait, aim in the shabbat Rabbi Shimon." Maybe say, "When did Rabbi Shimon say this halacha of davar gemul mamu kamam dami?" That's something that cause uh, is like as if it's the money itself is bedavish she kare mamun. It's regarding something that its primary origin is monies. Kid Rabba. Wow, what does that mean? Dami Rabba. Rabba says like this. And again, this is we're all discussing it, like in Rabba. Says Gazel Chametz Lefnei Pesach. If someone stole Chametz before Pesach, Uba'ach Besarfai, and someone came along and uh, 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 and burnt it, meaning someone else, someone stole Chametz, stole a truck full of of, uh, of uh, tasty cakes, and uh, another guy comes along and he burns it. B'mayid. Now B'mayid Rashi explains means at the time of when you have to be your Chametz, six hours into the day, Erev Pesach, that's it. The big big bonfires. Burning everything. So the guy burns it then. 
Potter is going to be exempt because Shakomet Sabin Olavar. Everyone has a mitzvah then. Everyone's commanded them to burn it. So he's not doing anything wrong by burning that guy who stole the Chomets at that time. Now, La'acha Pesach, on the other hand, if let's say this other guy burns the Chomets that this guy stole, the Tasty King truck, he unloads it after Pesach and burns it then, uh, that's Machlik's Dibshim B'Rabbanon. What's the Machlik's? That when you have something that's a causation of monetary loss, is like you did an act of monetary damage. So, because, as Rashi explains, the guy who burnt it, it has to pay the goslin the monetary value of that tasty cake truck. Why? Because Because if all these cakes would still be there in the back of the truck, guess what? The Gazan pulls up in front of the owner's house or warehouse and he pulls in and he's potter. Because the Mishnah told him that if someone steals chametz and it's already past Pesach, he could say, Even though obviously it's chametz on Pesach, but, but <laughs> that's a Hezek Shein It's unrecognizable. I could just come and return it. Now that it's not here anymore, I'm going to have to give back the monetary value to the owner. You caused me. That loss. That's to be hold. It doesn't really have value. It, it, it's going to be causing monetary damage. Well, that's what we're going to say right now. The Rabbana Damri the Maman Lav Kamam Dami. Kurn Rabbana hold that something that causes a monetary loss is only a cause, but it's not like actual monies that you destroyed. Potter, you're going to be Potter. That's the Machlaikis. They hold that. It, it, you're not chayy for something indirectly. We don't live in Dini Shemayim. We live in Dini Adam. Dini Adam is if you actually damage, not that you cause damage. Now, by Chametz on Pesach it, it is where we say this machlekes. Why? Because Ikarai, in other words, in the beginning, it was money. Tasty cakes, each cake costed $5 in that bag. Now, even though it's not worth anything, because it's after Pesach, but it's a goyim l'mamen. That's where we say the machlik is Reb Shimon and the Rabbanim. But by the documents, which is bedava she'eni kare mamen, a document never had any intrinsic monetary value. It was always a goyim l'mamen. Ah, mi amrinen, did we say that you would have the machlik is Reb Shimon and the Maybe it's not true. Maybe Reb Shimon would agree that it would not be Kamam and Dhamma, and everyone would hold like Rabbi's teaching that Grama bin Izakin is going to be Pater. So the Gemara doesn't necessarily agree to what the Gemara was qualifying, or if Dimi Bachanina was saying that Rabbi's teaching is a Machlik is a not true. Kobi Yubshim would agree. I, he says, Dabagam the Maman, that's what he called the it originally had monetary value. But something that never did, maybe he would agree, it's not going to be considered as money. Now the Gemara continues to. Qualified this teaching of Rabba, Amar Meimer. Amar says, Man de don dine gdigarmi, which we'll see later on on Avkuf, which is a big uh, discussion in the Rishayinim, what's Grama, what's Garmi, is it the same thing, is it different things? But the one, which is Remeir, later on Avkuf, who holds that Yuchayev for Garmi, for indirect causation, so Magvibe, yeah, you're going to collect from the guy who burned the document, the whole document, because he caused him the loss of this $100,000 or $500,000, whatever it is now, he doesn't have a document. <laughs> the lawyer said, I'm sorry, there's nothing to do. This was all in the document, and now it's done. So then according to him, you're going to be chayev. A man, but a one who's not going to educate cases of indirect causation. The only thing you collect is a piece of paper. That's all you collect, because that's what the damage actually was. And the Gemara brings, there was a story the Kafir Raf from Ravashi. Raf from, um, he forced Ravashi, who when he was a young boy, he had burnt someone's document, the Agvi Bay, and he collected from him a full collection, whatever was written in the document, Kikeshuva uh, Latsalma, a, 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 a full payment from the, the highest quality, like this beam, which is the most choices from all the other beams that you want to make a, a form or some type of a. Uh, an ornamental thing, you're going to use the best beam. That's like what he collected from him, everything, because again, he held like this halacha of doing din de garmi, that you can be chayiv 
for indirect cause, and therefore he collected from him the full amount. Now going back to the halacha, the Mishnah, which was we, we quoted before, Chometz um, Babel Pesach. Let's say it's, uh, you, someone had stolen Chometz, and now it passed Pesach. He tells him, look, take back your Chometz, all those super snacks, it's, uh, it's yours. So the Gemara says, Man Tana, who is the town of our Mishnah? That I mean, we say, be surah, no, by things that are forbidden to have benefit, which is, you can't, Chametz that was over Pesach, it's, you can't have anah from it anymore, but it's Hezek, Shein, and Nicker, it's unrecognized damage. Super snacks look just as good and taste just as good, maybe not, it wasn't that fresh, but it's, you know, it's, it's still uh, only a few weeks old, that you can still tell my Rishon Chalav Adacha, yeah, take it, it's yours. And Rav Chizdi says, Rabbi Yaakov, he, it's Rabbi Yaakov, the time they a Bryson. Shor Shehemis, an ox that killed a person and someone, the owner sells him, before the verdict is handed down. So, it's a valid sale. And actually what's going to happen is the end was not going to be stoned because the Gemara told us in Perk Shor Shehemis that you need to have Misa Vahamad Bedin Sheishav Ke'echad. has to be that the animal killing and its court case and its ultimate verdict has to all be with the same owner. And therefore, if you sell, actually now it will preclude the animal from being stoned to death. So it's a valid sale. Hektesh and muktesh, if you sanctify it, it's going to be hektesh. Shachta, if you slaughter the animal, besar mutter, the meat is mutter. It was before the Gemara din. So there was nothing, there was no liability yet. There was nothing wrong that you did. It's going to be mutter. Now, let's say um, you gave it back to the original owner. Let's say you were a shamer. And it killed in your possession, and you give it back. So Muxer, the, the, the shame is going to be exempt because again, at this point, there was nothing that, that was different about the ox. Now, Mishinigma Dina, however, if the verdict had already been handed down, and then Machadai he sells it now, it's not sold anymore. It's already Isihano. Ikdesha, if you want to sanctify it, because you can't sanctify it. Shachta, you want to slaughter it, Saras, the meat's forbidden. If the, if the, if the Shemi gives it back to the owner at this point, in the books, you haven't given them back anything. It's already, it's already Isra no, it's already, it's already on, on its way to the guillotine. It's, uh, um, who's the town of our Mishnah? It wants to tell us this next opinion, actually, we're up to right now, Rabbi Yaakov Lehman. Rabbi Yaakov disagrees on this last point. He says, Av Mishnah he says, even though the verdict has been handed down, if the Shemi gives it back to the owner right now, it's returned. So the Gemara says, wait a second, what's this machlikis? My love book of Isn't it this point that they're disagreeing about? The Biyakir Savar, he holds, I'm Mr. we say, by things that are prohibited to have benefit from it, which is what a sure that's going to be niskal, and the verdict has already been handed down, but it happens by itself, you'll say, you could say, here, take it back. It is what it is. And that's the halach of our Mishnah, but the Chamed Shabbat Lubbah Pesach, that's the same thing with the Shor Haniskel. We're, take it back. Rabban Zabini hold, no, ain't no Mishra Nara Shach Benach, you can't say, here, take it back. What are you talking about? This is, <laughs> the animal's about to be stoned. This is Chamed Shabbat Lubbah Pesach, it's Yisuch no. So therefore, that seems to be the Rabbi Yaakov is the Tana of our Mishnah. So Malay Rabbi says, Loi, no, not necessarily. The Kulam, you could say that according to everyone, Imrin and Bisura, no, you say by things with are Osaba, no, like our Mishnah. Harisho Khalfanacha. And you could say the Halakha of Mishnah, Khamazan Pesach, even the Rabban would agree that you could say Harisho Khabanach. Because the Imkin, if you're going to think to say that according to Rabban, you don't say, then why are they disagreeing about in the Brysa a case of a Shoyer regarding a Shoymer to say, oh, is he part of there or not? Why don't you disagree regarding a guy who stole chametz in Avodah Pesach? And you could say, over there, this halacha of, yeah, that you can't say, why are you disagreeing only by an ox that's about to be stoned, which is a little bit more severe, because say, oh, chametz looks the same, nothing's happening to it. Obviously, no, they agree. And uh, you could say our mission is not just like Rabbi Yaakov, it's even like Rabbi too. So then, so then Elam Rabbi says, Ha-ha-ha. So then what's the machlik is actually over here by the ox that killed that they're saying that you cannot return it. Why? I thought, I thought you said about Isra. No, they agreed to Allah on this. You could say, yeah, 
But that's because begoy merendina shel shosh lebefon of kemifaki. The machlek is regarding: Are you allowed to prosecute an ox when it's not there? What's the machlek? So the Gemara explains: Rabbanan Sabri, Rabbanan hold, ein goy merendina shel shosh lebefonim. You cannot prosecute an ox when it's not there. The Omar lay where he could tell him this israhana, this that this ox is now forbidden to have benefit, is not an isr that came by itself like Chometz Bepesach. No, you killed your with your bare hands, you killed my ox. What do you mean? Because you brought him to court. Had you brought him to me, says the owner to the Shimer, have Marik Nalela Agma. I would have hit him in some swamp. Hash to Misarte Biyad. Now you gave him over into the hands of Mandula Matsina Lishtu Dinma that I can't discuss with. They're not going to listen to me. They're going to prosecute the ox. That's your fault because the Rabbanan held that you, I, you wouldn't be able to prosecute the ox in absentee. The Yaakov Sabi held, no, what are you talking about? Government You can prosecute an ox even if he's not there. Oh, so the Amalek, the Dipper, the Shemek, tell the owner, my Abdullah, what I do to him? So if so, have Gamalek Dinish Labavan, either way, they would have prosecuted him even if he was not there. Now, Rashi just points out, although you could say that the Allah of a Mishnah is like Rabbanan too, but the safe of the Mishnah is most definitely Rabbi Akiv and not like Rabbanan, because the Mishnah tells us, even if it's going out to be stoned, he could still say, as we'll see shortly in the Gemara, well, that's clearly like Rabbi Akiv and not like Rabbanan, but at least the first part, we're saying could even be like the Rabbanan and not necessarily just like Rabbi Yaakov. And but I they disagree regarding Shar. That's different because that's when you let the Shar be brought to court, it's like you actively did something, and therefore that's not going to be considered as like the case of Hamas and Pesach, which was Mamela, and therefore that's why you're going to be chayv. Why would they prosecute the Shar if there's no consequence? If it's not there, it can't be killed. Yeah, if you if you ultimately uh, if they if they go no, in the it's not there, even if it's not there. But the thing is, even so, it'll still be Isabana. Even if they're not going to have to prosecute him, once they hand on the verdict, it's, it's Isabana. Right. But I'm saying the point is, if they're going to prosecute him, the moment they hold guilty, it's pretty Isabana, and he's not going to have enough from it anymore. Yeah, okay. That, I don't know if we say Migui, you know what I'm saying? Had I been, you know what I'm saying? But, but not after the Gemara did. No. There's no issue. He would have brought it and said, my, my Abdullah is so sure that I'm not going to. I could have sold it before he brought it there before. Right, right, right. There's no answer to stone because there's no answer at all. Does it say that he knows that there's going to be a cow? Yeah, no. I don't know if that's considered how Rama or whatever. No, I mean. But Al-Kapanim, this is going to be considered as a Mohezek Vyadayim, according to the Rabban. Now, Ashkere, so again, remember, Rav Chizda wanted to say that the Allah of our Mishnah is Reb Yaakov. And he was drawing a parallel in the Machlik as the Abay Shar to say they would have the same Machlik as regarding Chametz, and that our Mishnah is not Rabbanan. And then the Bnei Yeshiva said to him, what are you talking about? Not necessarily. And they made a differentiation, like Rabbah said. So the Gemara says, the Ashkech Rav Chizl Rabbah Bar Shmuel. Rav Chizl encountered Rabbah Bar Shmuel. Amal, he says, Tanisa Mida Bi did you Did you learn anything regarding this topic of a Surah Ano? Which Rashi tells Rav Chizda was trying to find a Mishnah that you find a machloikis that the, uh, regarding this halach of Hamas and Pesach. Because he wanted to explain that the one who would hold that you cannot give it back after Pesach would be like Rabbanan, because you don't say by Isra no Harish al And that because he wanted to say our Mishnah is only like Rabbi Yaakov. So he was looking for like, you know, Epis, you know, it's a Varaya. So, so Omale says, and yes, I actually have a teaching regarding Isra no. So then you learn in a brisa that there's a pasuk in the Yikra that says veheshev is exela. Then the guy has to return the stolen goods. What do you learn with the words asher gazel that he stole? It's already veheshev is exela. What's asher gazel? Yachze kein she gazel. He gives it back only because as it is, as he stole it. The kanomer from here we we say gazel mat beib and nifsal. Someone steals a coin and it became disqualified, or pears very kubu, or fruits and it became rotten, or yain behechmets where. The only guy points out the gears is really the hikrim because the is actually different. It became like a, like like a, some cream over the top of the wine, or truma v'nitmis, or truma became tummy. Or chametz v'ba pesach, chametz had pesach passed. These are all the grama cases. Or behemah v'nevda ba'veira, or an animal and and the sin was done with it. Or b'sharach l'nei medina, or an ox until the the verdict wasn't handed down. 
all these cases, I'm like, look, uh, this is yours, take it back as it is. No, because again, there was no sheen over here, uh, at least that's recognizable, and if it wasn't kind, and if it's kind, it goes. Says the Gemara, Man Shamale Dama, who's the one that says actually Nigma Dina in that if the verdict wasn't handed down, yes, then you could return the mission Nigma Dina Loy. Once the verdict was handed down, you cannot. That's the Rabbanan. Because Rabbi Yaakov said, even when the Gemara Din was already handed down, you could still give it back. So we're proving that this Brisa is like the Rabbanan. And yet, Vigatani, what do we see in the Brisa? Chamas Vola Pesach, Oymala Harisha Chalavanecha, which is like the Allah of the Mishnah, which like the way Rabbi said to Rav Chiz, it's not true that you're trying to say our mission is only like Rabbi Yaakov. You see, it's even like the Rabbanan. So Malaysia Rav Chizda said to him, if you encounter the Bnei Yeshiva, don't tell them anything about this, Brisa, because they're going to be happy that they found the refutation for what I was trying to, my Shtikl Teira, I was trying to say, oh, a whole Shir Klali, who's the town of the Mishnah? It's Rabbi Yaakov, because I could show you that Rabbi Yaakov holds by the Shoir that, that, uh, that you could give it back, and it's not considered as a, a problem. You could say, Harish Chalvanecha, and Lishitasai, and then the, the Shiva light said, sorry, upshlag with the shik lali, because look, you see clearly that the Rabbanon hold that you could say Rosh Hashanah by Chomets and Pesach. I'm sure you have to say a different shmuz, like we said, because it's considered Hezek be a dying, because you could have, I could have taken them to a cave and, and, you, and you brought them to court, and therefore that's why it's different over there. But Gabon says, yeah, don't let them know this, uh, you know, they'll be too happy that the, the, the upshlag of my shik lali uh, was, was proven. But continue, uh, the, the, the Brisa had said, we just mentioned that it appears to be hikibu, that if there was fruits and they were rotten, you could tell them, here, look, here's your fruits back. He says, well, how could you say that? But now we learn that Mishnah appears to be hikibu, they have fruits and they're rotten. That is considered shinoi. You, you pay and, and because it was already a kinyin of, of a gazela. And my papa says, well, it depends. Khan and Amish is hikibu kul, and all of it rotted. Khan shikibu mikitsasin, and the brace is only some of it, that's not considered as enough of a shinoi, and therefore you could say, Harish al-Khalafanach. Continue with the halacha of the next Mishnah um, regarding the th- same theme regarding a shinui that obligates you, um, and therefore it's kinyan gizela. So too, a similar theme says the Mishnah nasan l'umnin l'sakin. Let's say you give something to a professional. This happens often. You bring something to the cleaners, to the tailor, to the pl- or whatever, whatever store it is, professional. And the kilkli actually ruins it. Halacha is chayim l'shalom. So that professional, that 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 uh, tire layer or whatever it is, he's got to pay. Let's say Nasl Khad Shida. Let's say you give a carpenter, um, you give him the, your armoire, or you give him a, a, a wagon that the women uh, ride on. That's really what a Shida is, or a table, a box, a migdal, a, a closet, whatever it is, Lusakin to fix. The kilt only ruins it. Okay, have a shop, he's got to pay. Now, have a banai, a builder, should keep a little blister as a kaisel. He's like, okay, A to Z, E to Z, E Z, whatever, all the, whatever, A, B, C. He comes and he's like, with blister as a kaisel, he's taken down the wall. The Shiba Avanim. And he breaks the stones, or he damages them. You're supposed to just take apart the wall, and now you ruined it. He's got to pay. But let's say he was knocking down the wall on one side, and it falls on the other side. Potter, for that he's exempt. But because of his hitting, that's considered a direct cause of what he's doing. So Amram Asi qualifies Allah the mission. He said, We didn't learn that you You gave it to a carpenter. She did take a you gave him the, 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 the carriage or the box, the closet, just to knock in the nail. Some people actually have to hire someone to do that. And but not been masmer, he knocks in the nail, but then he breaks it. Okay, it's high for the closet, it's high for the, for the, for the wagon. But let's say he gave him wood. To make the wagon and the box and the closet. You got a Home Depot put it together, you don't know how to do these things. And he said, do me a favor, make this for me. And the guy made the carriage, made the box, made the closet. But the shibrin. Then at the end of the day, he's almost done, you're all excited, and he gives one clap and he breaks it. Potter, then he's going to be exempt. Why is he going to be exempt? He ruined your, your carriage. What's the difference? No, my time of umen koin bishrachli. Allah is that a professional, when he makes the, the item improved, those are things that he acquires. It's his. Then he, so to speak, like <laughs> sells it back to you. But since it's his, he's not going to be chayiv what he did, and therefore he's not going to be chayiv for that damage of the closet, of the, of the carriage, and so on. So the Gemara we want to be our Mishnah. Naslam, the Kilkulu, he said, you give it to a, a craftsman, and he ruins the chayiv and the that they have to pay. My love isn't that the Yablo ate him, that he gave them wood, 
and they made it, and then they ruined it at the archive? So they go, no, no, she didn't make it. Let's talk about you actually gave him a carriage, a box, a closet. Uh, you gave him your item. Then he ruins your closet. Then he's going to be high. So they said, but what, wait, how could you say that? Because look a little bit later in the mission. The mission says, she did table make if you give him a carriage, a box, a closet, then you're gonna be chai. Machal the Rasha ate some. Obviously, the Rasha that didn't say that just said Nusl Omen the Sakim a kilklu is talking about that he gave him just the wood. And that you see he's gonna be chai. Says Gemara, no, I'm a producer of Farish law. It's actually explaining. Kaitzad Nusl Omen the Sakim a kilklu came the sham. The mission is explaining itself. When did I say this idea that if you give it to a craftsman to fix any runes, he's gonna be have to pay? It's good going. Shouldn't the Lachadish? Should the Tevmikl where you gave him a, 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 already a box, a closet, a carriage? Then you can be chai, because or else he'll be potter. Because of Omicron and the And the Gemara says, it's logical to say this, the case of Tani, that the Mishnah is actually saying, explaining it. Because these are the going to think to say, Reisha eats and that the first case is talking about wood. And then the closet doesn't make sense. Hashash meaning eats and the Chayyim, if you already told me you're when you gave him only the wood and he made the carriage and that he's Chayyim for the carriage, we say that we don't say that, oh, the craftsman acquired it, it's his. So then, should Tibbet make Do I have to tell you when you gave him already the closet already and then he ruins it? Of course, he can be Chayyim. So, so obviously it's just explained. The Gemara says, no, Imishim Ha, if that's your Raya law area, that's not a proof. Because ten the save of the glory ratio, you could say that the save was said to reveal regarding the case of the ratio. Meaning, Shaloitama, don't say that ratio that was talking about when you give something to Umin Lasak and Bakilkli. Is Shidatiba Migdal is already when you gave him already pre-existing closet, and only the be chayiv. I will eat some loy, but if you give him just wood, then he won't be because Umma Kamish Rakli, I can tell you, ton the safer. I told you another case of Shidatib Migdal. Mechlal, the inference is that that's not the case of the Reisha. Must be the Reisha eats him. Still, you have to pay. So it's not a raya from the mission. You could explain, but it wouldn't be a raya. Thank you, John. Anytime.